name is Carcamo, the Forger of Pain. I'm a pro wrestler from the Panama Republic with over 10 years of experience in the business. I became a gamer thanks to my father who gave me an Atari 2600. I've decided to share my passion with the world and spread my love for horror, anime, and good vibes to infinity and beyond. Welcome to Carcamo Gaming. What's up my Carcamaniacs out there? This is your South American Extreme Champion from War Ecuador, Carcamo, the Forger of Pain. And welcome back to Carcamo Gaming. And today I have something that I've been meaning to share with you guys for lots and lots of years now. Will you look at that? It's time crisis for the OG PlayStation or the PSX as I used to call it back in the day. Oh yeah, this is an import only. So what do you say if we just, let's just jump into it, shall we? Orgasmic sound. I can feel the memories filled with dopamine and ecstasy rushing through my mind instantly, transporting myself to a simpler time. The first time I played this game was back in 1995. Give or take in an arcade in Panama City called Diversiones Moy. As a little devil spawn, or teenager if you will, this arcade machine blew my mind because of its big and humongous size. But in all honesty, I never saw an arcade machine that big, you know, other than racing arcade cabinets back in the day. Now, before I start blasting away people with the light gun or gun con by Namco, uh, you know something? I gotta get the proper gear to do this because if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. Oh yeah! Obviously, like many boomers or people my age or around my age, our first gangsta experience was with Duck Hunt, all the way back to the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES. The light gun was so popular that it got a cameo in Back to the Future 2. And keep in mind, those were the days where video games were considered something geeky and in many cases, just for kids. You mean you have to use your hands? That's like a baby's toy. Hmm. Baby's toy. Time Crisis was developed by Namco. You might know them for Pac-Man, Galaga, and Tekken just to name a few of their intellectual properties. I never thought we would be able to have this game at home, and to my surprise, two years later, in 1997, Time Crisis arrived for my favorite console of all time, the OG PlayStation. I 
obviously, it's not the same, but it's close enough for my 14-year-old brain. Right now, you can clearly see the graphic comparison between the arcade cabinet and the PlayStation Home port. In the startup screen, we'll find three modes. Arcade mode, the options menu, and special, but more on that later. The story is that cheesy and cliche as it gets. And you know what? That's part of the fun. I think it has aged even better nowadays. So let's hear the story from the game itself. There's been a kidnapping. It's Rachel, the daughter of the president of Sertia. Get into the castle and rescue Rachel. Sometime, somewhere, someone is plotting a government overthrow. A small republic is in danger. It's time for the one-man army. Richard Miller. She must be dead by now. Don't come! Rachel McPherson. <laughs> Since you have traveled so very far, be my guest and let me entertain you. Cherido Gano. Your father will pay the price for destroying the Imperial rule. You're a badass hero and it's time to kick names and take ass. Or is it the other way around? As a video game collector, I have a shit ton of this peripheral. John Wick wishes he was this prepared for battle. And for some reason, I have two of each. Yeah, I know. I have issues. Nonetheless, it's awesome to see how they have evolved with the passing of time. I don't know why, but these companies have an orange fetish. Most of them are orange. What the heck, man? Nintendo named their own light gun as the NES Zapper. I love the Zapper, no complaints there. And don't even get me started with the Wii Cops. Oh, whatever the name is. They are putrid, hyenas, horrifying and disgusting. Yeah, as you can tell, I don't like them. This brings us to the Gun Cop, and why I own the Japanese version of Time Crisis. Just look at that, the edgiest color of them all. What? The game is comprised in three areas. Yeah, it's a short game, and that's good. This is a game that doesn't overstay its welcome. But trust me, you won't be able to beat it on your first, second, or even third attempt. I spent my weekly allowance for a year in this arcade, and this version is no different. I would say it's even tougher, because in the big ass OG cabinet, you can finish it with all the money in the world. But here, it's three hits, seven continues, and that's it. You're done for. That's all, folks. No. <laughs> but this is where the timer mechanic takes place. As the name implies, time crisis, get it? You have a very limited amount of time to finish each section of the game. And you need to get as many kills as fast as possible to get from point A to point B. There is a lot of variety in these little things. The blue guys are putties, no problem there. The red soldiers are a-holes. They shoot these red lasers and they take one health point from one single hit. 
the soldiers that give you bonus seconds usually don't stay in the screen for a long time. So if you see them, shoot to kill, baby! I'm not even close to kidding when I say the firing is pretty damn accurate. And the timer does its job as you feel anxiousness and tension, stress, as the time is about to run out to get to your destination. Just like that, from stress, you feel like a mofo badass when you barely beat the mission in the nick of time. It feels so satisfying. You gotta love the 90s voice acting. Ah, it's so good. Embrace the cheese. It's all over. The girls at the top of that tower. She must be dead by now. <clears throat> you can play this game without the gun con, but where's the fun in that? Let's assume you became a pro, and you can beat this game in 20 minutes. This is where the PlayStation version gets an exclusive mode with its own missions, levels, and bosses. Leave me alone. It's men like you that are ruining this world. There is not much to talk about this, other than it's more of the same, which is not bad in this case. You're getting more bang for your buck. So no complaints there. Namco wasn't the only one that got their hands deep into the light gun craze. Oh no! The famous and also one of my favorite light gun games, Virtual Cop for the Sega Saturn. Konami with their Silent Scope series. Capcom wasn't late to the party either with the Resident Evil games spanning two console generations. I don't mean to take away credit from the other company, but I think the real hero of this story is Namco, because they kept alive the quote-unquote light gun games until 2009 with Rising Storm, a game that supported the PlayStation Move and their latest gun con. This is an experience I highly recommend for everyone, especially you youngsters that missed out on these awesome games. The bad news is that there's no easy way to play these types of games. Most of the light guns only work with CRT TVs. So you would not only need the console, the game, the light gun, but also the big ass CRT TV. I think the closest thing we have today is virtual reality, the PlayStation Move that feels kind of silly if you ask me. So I think it's better to take this bastard on a real man's gun. Ah, uh, nope, it's still not the same. I really don't want to end this on a sad note. There are interesting developments in third-party light guns that work with modern LED screens. But more on that on another video, kitties. For now, all I can say is that the video game history repeats itself. Like today, every company's trying to make a battle royale game. In those days, we had an awesome craze for light gun games. And maybe, just maybe, we are bound to visit this genre again. Someday, someday, my little creatures of the night.